Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Chris Matthews just said gun owners are just like the North Vietnamese, it's disgusting. In the aftermath of the Las Vegas concert tragedy, liberals have been shooting themselves in the foot, so to speak, with the hysterical way they have tried to politicize the event and push for laws that will restrict Americans' Second Amendment freedoms. MSNBC host Chris Wallace most certainly did not do Democrats any favors when he made a ridiculous parallel and claimed that advocates for gun rights are just like the North Vietnamese in the Vietnam War. Said Matthews in a ramble to USA Today's senior political correspondent Heidi Perzabilla in The Washington Post's Eugene Robinson, you know, we couldn't win in Vietnam because we were going to stay, they were going to stay there, and we're going to come home. He continued, the people who are for gun control get interested in something for a while, but the gun owners stay with it. They never leave it. They're the home team, and they're never going to let people touch their guns. Instead of knocking Wallace for his absurd and offensive statement, the liberal panelists agreed with Chris. Robinson went even further and said that gun owners, just like the North Vietnamese, always have the edge on intensity on that image. He added, becoming emotional, and that has been the case for years and years and years, and is certainly the case now. And looking at the national level, the federal level, this Congress and this president, it's, I wish I could work myself up into thinking that something would happen, but I can't. I can't. Do you think liberals like Matthews are hurting their own cause by making ridiculous comments like this? Rachel Maddow just said who her favorite Republican is, it's last person you'd expect. It's not news that MSNBC host Rachel Maddow is an odd person. She graduated from Stanford University and then was selected to be among only 32 American students to be a Rhodes Scholar and go to England's Oxford University. Instead of using her brain power to make real change in the world, Maddow decided to become a tacky host on the most liberal biased cable news station. Lesbian Maddow is a hardcore Democrat and wastes no shortage of breath railing in the most partisan, thoughtless fashion against conservatives. However, she recently made the surprising choice of naming for Variety magazine who her favorite Republican is. Scribbled Maddow in her article as part of the magazine's new Power of New York list, the country is still bewildered today by the transformation of the swaggering but stalwart conservative GOP of the Bush-Cheney era in less than a decade into the brain, cursing, handsy, brazenly corrupt no nothing we're living through now. She then singled out fellow MSNBC host Nicole Wallace as her favorite Republican saying that she is one of the few Republicans who operated at the highest level of Republican presidential politics who saw the transformation coming. Maddow, who has no military background and has no business talking about patriotism, then said, Nicole is a deep-red Republican, and a loyal conservative, but she's a patriot first, second and third. What do you think about Maddow's choice? Nancy Pelosi admits that her attack on bump stocks is a slippery slope to what she really wants. Nancy Pelosi exposed what her true intentions are when it comes to gun control, and it isn't good. Democrats often try to say they don't want a full ban on guns, they just want common sense gun control laws. However, if you give them an inch, they will take a mile. There have been many liberals arguing that we need to be more like Australia, who banned guns entirely. There are going to be Republicans who resist this because they say, give the gun control people an inch and they'll try to take a mile. So how do you plan to overcome that when the truth is that you would like to go further? A reporter asked about Pelosi's call to ban bump stocks. So what? Responded Pelosi. They're going to say, you give them bump stock, it's going to be a slippery slope. I certainly hope so. 
but I don't think bump stock should be a substitute for the background check, said Pelosi. By the way the background check is a compromise. There are many more things members want to do, and we're saying, how do we save the most lives? We save more lives with a background check, said Pelosi. Her comments are especially ironic because the Vegas shooter would have passed any background check. Why can't liberals respect our Second Amendment? And Coulter eviscerates Washington Post for saying they are relieved Vegas shooter was white. The mainstream media has been celebrating that the Vegas shooter is a white guy and not a Muslim. Whenever it is a Muslim, they preach to not judge all Muslims based on the actions of a few. But when it is a white guy, they can attack white people as a race. The Washington Post wrote an article called I was devastated about Las Vegas, but quietly relieved that the shooter was white. I doubt many people of color were celebrating and high-fiving each other because we didn't look like the bad guy. But I know that if the shooter has been black, the national conversation would somehow strawman its way into being about Black Lives Matter and black criminality. God help us if it had happened at a rap concert, they wrote. And Coulter slapped some sense into the media with an epic rant. The media's idea of hard-hitting investigative reporting is to taunt gun owners and white men. Making snarky political remarks is job number one of reporters. Apparently, it's also the new job description for late-night comics. As long as we're looking for jobs that Americans just won't do, maybe we could find some immigrants to tell jokes and report news," wrote Coulter. We're getting a lot of smirky, celebratory headlines, like these, America's White Man Problem, How America Has Silently Accepted the Rage of White Men the white privilege of the lone wolf shooter. While it's great that liberals have finally found a mass murder that they don't think can be defeated with a Charlie hashtag, they're either lying or they don't know what they're talking about," wrote Coulter. It only took four words for James Woods to crush Jimmy Kimmel after emotional anti-gun rant. Ever since the shooting in Vegas, talk show host Jimmy Kimmel has repeatedly used his platform to insult Republicans and conservatives. Because they are more pro-Second Amendment, Kimmel accuses them of not caring about the victims and even for being responsible for the shooting. However, conservative actor James Woods was able to crush Kimmel in just four words. Woods posted a link to an article from Mercury News called Jimmy Kimmel Increases Security at Show Due to Trump Supporters. Ever since the late-night show host began crusading against the effort by President Donald Trump and congressional Republicans to repeal the Affordable Care Act, there have been incidents with Trump supporters that have forced him to increase security at his show tapings, says the article. Surely not armed security? tweeted James Woods. And that right there is the issue with Kimmel's entire argument. There are a lot of things we could do about it. But we don't, which is interesting because when someone with a beard attacks us, we tap phones, we invoke travel bans, we build walls, we take every possible precaution to make sure it doesn't happen again. But when an American buys a gun and kills other Americans, then there's nothing we can do about that," said Jimmy Kimmel on his show. They should be praying for God to forgive them for letting the gun lobby run this country," said Kimmel about Republicans. Nothing was happening. So, I tweeted, Hillary takes credit for Trump's efforts to help Puerto Rico. Failed presidential candidate Hillary Clinton just tried to take credit for all of President Trump's hard work in Puerto Rico. At first the media tried to say that President Trump isn't doing anything to help Puerto Ricans. Now that he's doing so much that they can't deny it any longer they are going to try to give credit to Hillary Clinton. You know recently with the hurricanes and particularly the damage in the Virgin Islands and in Puerto Rico you know I was right in the middle of our government responding to the horrible effects of the earthquakes in Haiti so I know what we're capable of doing," said Hillary. And I waited because I thought they don't need me saying, hey, send naval assets, 
get the hospital ship comfort down there, but a couple of days later nothing was happening. So, I tweeted, she said. I tweeted at the President and the Secretary of Defense and the Defense Department. And I basically implored them to send naval assets, including the hospital ship, and it took a few more days and then finally they did, she said. She went on to argue that tweeting is the best way to get a response from the President. I suppose I could go on some of the TV shows he watches, but I think tweeting helped, she said.